Welcome to Let Us Fan Page. My name is Emily Fong Noel Oge of Let Us Farm. So today, we want to be discussing about what causes cuts on the skin, the head, and the body of your catfish. Before we go further, may I use this opportunity to remind you that this is Let Us Fan Page, and all we do here is we just try to do practical knowledge of what we do in our different agri sectors. If you are having any challenge in your farm, kindly do a two to three minutes video. Do this video when you are feeding and send it to me. When I look at this video, I will be able to tell you one or two things that causes this problem. And I assure you, if you do what I say, that problem will be over. Remember, we don't have any WhatsApp group or any Telegram group. Do not subscribe. Do not follow anybody on behalf of Tele on behalf of Let Us Farm. All we do here, you're going to see it here or any other platform that you will see me like this. So, like I said, um, we shall be looking at what causes cuts or body injury on catfish. I'll be right back. This kind of thing has killed my fishes on daily basis. Kind of red so I don't know. Anyone that contacted this, others will attack that one to death. You can see? That one is dead. What do I do, sir? Please. About three or four of my five fishes die every day. Then on daily basis. Three months old, I bought from Juvenile. Welcome back. So, like I said, you watch the clip that I just played now. Yeah, you can see the bruises that are on the body of these fishes. Now, the irony of it is this. Most times you may see things like this, but you'll be wondering what exactly caused this problem. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when you talk to consultants, remember I'm not a consultant. I don't have anything to sell to you. When you talk to consultants, they tell you a lot of bogus stories. Some tell you that, look, your fishes, um, they have fungi infections. We tell you this is a tail rod, this is a fin rod, this is a gill rod. You know, some gives you some even names that to pronounce is a problem. But these are simple things that I say every time, but we may not, we don't want to listen and Unfortunately, the results are not very pleasant. The video you watched now was actually sent by someone who has this problem in the farm. He's now worried that he doesn't know why this is happening. Now, what you have seen is not as a result of any infection, no. It's not as a result of maybe something spiritual. No, because this is where our people talk. They tell you it's village people. It's not village people. This is a say something that is um, caused by negligence. What do I mean by negligence? There's something we call overstocking. And overstocking is a situation where you put more quantity of fish in a pond than what they're supposed to be. That is overstocking. And there's something we call understocking. Understocking is when you put less of fish where they're supposed to be. Now, this is the fact. There is no effect of understocking. Some people will tell you that the effect of understocking is that you're wasting water. Catfish live in water. It doesn't mean. So, if you're not paying for your water, it doesn't mean anything. But then again, some people will tell you you are wasting food. You can't waste food. The only way we waste food is that you don't know how to feed. If you know how to feed, it's only what they eat that you put for them. You can't waste food. Now, some people will argue that you are wasting energy. Energy is in you. 
So if you go to feed, if if a pod is supposed to take 500 and you have 50 in it, the energy you will burn is the energy of 50. But why people waste energy is that they will go and be scattering food. I always say use spot feeding. If you use spot feeding, it's the same spot that they will come. Therefore, you don't waste energy. These are simple facts, but you know, we make it blow it out of proportion. So it will sound like it's so big. It's not. You don't waste energy. Because it's the same source. That's the only thing that you say you waste, like I said, is water. But water is natural. So except maybe you spend more money in power, which doesn't cost anything. Because why I say this is because if you watch your output, for instance, let's say the stocking density of a particular pond is 100 and you put 50 catfishes in it and you want to raise these fishes for four months, I can guarantee you, if you feed those fishes very well, let's say the, 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 the one, because the capacity is 100, at four months you're having like 1.2, 1.5 and you now have 50. At that same four months, those 50 so will give it more than 2 kg. Simple. Because they have more space, they grow bigger and they are eating very well. So at the end of the day, you see that what you are going to gain in terms of weight will commensurate with what you are going to lose in terms of water wastage. What are we talking about? So there is actually nothing, no negative effect of understocking. But there is a huge negative effect of overstocking. Yes. You know, I gave you an analysis of what happens when you understock. What people will give you as excuse as understocking. Now, let me tell you partially what's going to be your excuse of overstocking. Now, when you overstock, what happens is this. The fishes will keep having injuries like this one you have seen now. This is just as a result of overstocking. The fishes run into each other. When they run into each other, they could be bruises from their fin. Because the pond is very tight. Like when people are talking about water density, they say fish will stay up. Look, believe it or not, your fishes don't sleep on top. They come down to sleep. So where most of these injuries happen is down. When they go down to, to stay, they are tight. And sometimes, if you, sometimes when you are changing water, it may happen, you won't know. Because they are tight then, as you are changing water, they move. They injure yourself. By the time the water rises, that injury keeps expanding. You never knew. So that injury that is expanding, you now starve your fishes. They didn't eat when they're supposed to eat. Or some are hungry. They see that injury, see blood coming out. They attack that injured place. And that's where the bruises come. Now, the irony is that it's your biggest fishes that will have this problem. Why? Because of their big size. So when they move in that tight angle, they get the injury. The smaller ones, because they are small, they won't have the injury. You see? So now, because they won't have the injury, they won't have any bodily injury. But the biggest ones that you are looking at, that, oh, this is going to give me my biggest profit, they have the injury. They attack these ones. And before you know, these attacks are not few. They are many. In the process of attack, they kill the fish. And once they kill it, they eat the fish. So who loses? The farmer loses. This is it. So now, what is the benefit of overstocking? Nothing. One, your fishes may be killed and be eaten by other fishes. That's economic loss. Two, if they don't kill the fishes, by chance, you may have 70% or 80% of your fishes that will not grow big, despite the fact you are feeding. They will be small. So once they are small, you know that everything you are doing, you are wasting your time because you will not make profit. That's what people don't understand. When you talk, some people will try to misunderstand it, but you won't make profit. Once you have small fish, when you are selling, you will see it. There's no profit. It's a loss. What did you gain? Nothing. Another thing is that they bring water contamination. Because they are too much in a very small confined area. Look, fishes, they have waste. Anything that eats, it will also go out. And when it's going out, it turns to waste. So... The water population where this waste is going is so small that the number of fishes there are more than what the water will take. So you have contamination. It smells badly. The thing is always contaminated. This contamination is what will now give them sickness. If you understand sea life, you discover that most fishes in the sea that don't have problem are deep divers because they go down the neatest part of the sea to stay. They don't have problem. But the ones that are always living on top and shallow places, they have problem. 
Same thing with the pond system. Because the pond is shallow, three feet, four feet water height. So the water circulation there will not be much. Then when you now overstock it, there will be no way for this things, for this waste to go. And it will not give your fishes infection. And with that infection, your fishes keep dying. So of what use do you have in overstocking? Nothing. So this is the problem in this video. But the owner didn't understand it. He was asking me for drugs and treatment. And look, this is not about drugs and treatment. The best treatment you can do here is get another pond, divide the fishes, separate the big ones from the small ones and let them have more space and then feed them very well. They'll be fine. The one that is injured, put it in a separate uh, container, just only it in a separate container, allow it to heal. If you must put something for them to heal, look for antibodies and put for it just to heal the wound and everything will be fine. You see, I don't like people using drugs in the fish pond and I'm going to do a video and explain this very well. The more you put drugs for them, you are weakening their immune system and they need their immune system to stay against germs and diseases. Have you understood anything from this video I played and do you have any question on it? If you do, kindly drop it in the comment section. And do you have anything you want me to talk about? Also use the comment section. Until I come your way next time, don't forget if you are having any issue with your pond, kindly do a 2-3 to three minutes video when you are feeding. And send it to me and i will pick it up from there until i come your way next time my name is emily from Oge of let us farm keep farming it's a way of life hey y'all come look at this